All right, guys. So this video, we're going to, I'm going to keep working on a picture of Raph. I'm going to be focusing on the shading of the fabric. Now, this figure, pretty cool because he has a real fabric coat, which means that all of the fabric is sort of sitting as it would if it was like real or like a photograph. So, um, as I work on it, you'll see that I'm, I've kind of really pared down my um, my tools a lot. I'll probably have to be toning a lot of this with white to kind of differentiate it from the browns that I was using up on his hat. Um, you know, it is like a seven inch scale figure, so some of the threads are way bigger than they should be. So I'll kind of be working through that. But with the fabric, you can see, eh, I don't want to move them because then I'm afraid I won't get them in the right po or the exact same spot that he's in now. So you can see folds and fabric, it's going to be just a lot of shading. So in my drawing, I've tried to just kind of outline these areas, kind of like what I tell you to do with the scratch board. Like, here's a medium area, here's a light area, here's a dark area. Outline all those different things. So, um, yep, I'm going to get to it. So, here he is. Um, Let's see if I can readjust this a little bit. Hold on. Okay, there we go. Sorry, I was going to see if that, uh, if I can make this show up a little bit better. Not so much. All right, so... I'm going to start off with some of my really dark areas. Um, partially I'm going to do this just because I'm really used to using ink and um, that that helps me. That's just which, you know, you've been in my class for long enough, you know that I'm all about, well, look at that value, look at this one, spot those blacks. Um, and that's kind of what I'm going to be doing here. So I'm going to actually start with the black because a lot of these shadows I'm going to be putting in are going to be just pretty much like as dark as I can get them, at least for these first ones. go back over that with that dark brown let's see this is going to be black right here and down here and this is just sort of where his uh, elbow pad is kind of going into his jacket his trench coat Go ahead and accentuate that line there. I'm going to be moving up one of those lines just a little bit. Go ahead and do the buckle because there are quite a few highlights on it. And 
I'm not going to worry about his thigh just yet. Well, might as well. I have the black in my hand after all. I'll at least get some of the form going on it. much solid black back there since it's farther back All right, now I'm gonna play around a little bit and see if I can get a good trench coat color. So figure a lot of it's probably, I'll probably do like a mid value over it just like this. And then have this for dark areas. Don't work those values together. Mm, man, that's awfully yellow. I could get in my big box of Prismas, but I'm trying to show you all that you can do this just with, uh, you know, the packs that we've got. Because more, more colors doesn't mean better. That just means you have more decisions to make. Nah, this is good. We'll roll with this sort of gradient. Which is what I, which, that's what I was thinking. No, um, so these sets of Prisma colors are great. Uh, sometimes you do have to work for the colors that you need. Um, but, I mean, you want to be... You want to kind of be careful with how many colors you try to blend, how many you try to use. I mean, I've been using these for a long time. So I'm kind of used, I've been using these since high school. Um, my big box that I have up at school, that is the pack that I got when I was in high school. Um, but the... Um, Oh, the more colors you have to choose from, it doesn't it's not necessarily a better thing, um, because generally, you know, you aren't going to need quite that many colors, kind of like, um, I don't know, the best frame of reference I have for it is whenever we start using the markers, uh, the alcohol-based markers that I got for us, they are, they're 80 counts, which is a lot. And that doesn't, that's not necessarily the best thing. I went for quantity because, well, we'll get more into alcohol markers when we get there. But with that quantity, you you know, I used, what, three greens on this? And if you've got 10 different greens, then you're, it just takes more time to try to realize, like, hey, is this, uh, are these greens what I need them to be, or whatever. I don't know. I just know that, like, I've got a set of the big ones, and I haven't really used them since I got them, but they were cheap, so I went ahead and purchased them. And then, uh, but one time... I found like a 12 pack at Mark, or maybe it was a 16 pack. It was at, I think, Marshall's, and it was like $7. So I bought it. And that, you know, 
with those 16 colors, that's like pretty much anything that I needed, I could uh, use those markers for. I'm probably going to have to kind of go back over this to kind of get more of that fabric texture, kind of like this. Another time that uh, the, um, the colorless blender would probably be a decent tool to use, or at least a time that I would give it a try. It's not that I have anything against the colorless blender. It's more the fact that, uh, I don't know, you can get much richer colors if you're using actual colors and not kind of muting it out with the um, colorless blender. A lot of folds happening back here. Let me go ahead and darken that up. Pull some of that detail back And I'm muting it out a little bit with the grays, or mixing black and white to get some gray. Alrighty. So I've got some cast shadows here, so I'm going to go ahead and And kind of work those on up to hit that for a highlight. Having to use way more black than I thought to try to keep these more in a neutral color range. I'm going to try to just leave that gray and see if I can tone it back up. Yeah. That's about the happiest I've been with any of this. I've been the, uh, you know, you, you all know how it is. You're your own worst critic. It's, well, I really like the way everything's turned out except for the trench coat. Maybe I'm not even going to show this for the fabric, but I think I just need to go about it a little differently. Let's see. more of a shadow right there on that fabric. And 
and this and this can get overtaken really easily so I'm gonna not worry about being heavy-handed with it I'm gonna go ahead and hit some of those dark values from some of the folds And this part of his jacket, it's wide on the figure, but I'm just going to take that as being that, like, it's probably, it's not going to, I'm not going to leave it white, but. I'm going to go ahead and do a black tone on this. Like this getting awfully dark, but you don't know the good thing about that. It'll it'll lighten back up. Or I won't even need to. See if I just didn't go a little too heavy handed on the black on this one. I'm going to try to go back the pattern of the cloth. Right. I think I'm going to try to throw some yellow on it to lighten it back up. Alright, I don't love that. Let's try to do some surgery. This is not recommended, by the way. Mm. Yeah, that's not a good idea.
Let's see. Well, one of those yellows is different than the one that I'd been using before. So let's see if I can lighten this up with a skin tone. Or a peach skin tone. I'm gonna, yeah, if that's what I did wrong, I mixed up, mixed it up as a gray instead of doing the brown first, and then doing the white over that. So the colors you layer, order does matter as long as you're staying consistent. There we go. That was only five minutes worth of struggle. That's better, I think. Let's see if we can keep in with some pretty cool cloth texture. All right, moving along. I think I might avoid using the black for a little bit here. So this area is going to be shaded. There's some, a little bit of shading right there. nice shadow under there too that I missed before so I'll hit that with the black I hit this for some of the lighter parts. That's going to be a little bit of a darker part. And this is going to be even lighter, so I'm going to go ahead and hit that with the white. And now I'm going to see about blending all these together.
Hit some of these shadows a little bit real quick. I don't love the difference between this side and this one, so I'm going to try to darken that up a little bit. That's pretty good. Oh. I'm gonna use the dark brown over here. Hit a little bit of a shadow. All right, and this will be part one. I'm going to go ahead and stop this before the time runs out. Get stoked for part two.